getting the logic, formatting, and everything just right when it comes to date times in your application is always tricky. One of the pain points is trying to get user inputted dates from a JavaScript application in the browser over to my .NET process. Let's mash on that. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. I'm flying solo today, and uh, we are continuing our exploration of looking at Nota time in .NET. And in particular, in this episode, we're looking at a uh, front-end application built-in view where we want to take the have the user input a date and then send that over to the server. Uh, without having the date shift on us by the amount of a time zone. Uh, we're just dealing with dates, and we're going to take a look at some of the pain points that I come across and the ways that I've found that, that work well for me to solve those problems. So I'm I have all the sample code for this series of videos. I'll link to all the previous videos in the series in the show notes. Uh, but I also have a GitHub repo for this that you can take a look at to see the, the working code. So I'll also link to that in the show notes. Just as a quick review, uh, over on the .NET side, we have this concept of a public holiday. So I have a single entity in my application called public holiday, has an ID to uniquely identify it, a name, and a local date. So local date is a, a structure within Nota time that represents a date within a calendar. I'm just reading the documentation for it here, but there's no reference to a particular time zone or a time of day. So an example of this would be January 1st, 2021 would be New Year's Day 2021 is my, would be a public, the public holiday. Okay, so we're not interested in time zones, we just want to capture the date. And uh, we don't need the time of day either, it's just the, the whole day. Okay, so that's my entity. I have this controller that returns dates. Uh, which we've looked at in the previous episodes, and now I've added this new endpoint here uh, where we can add a new public holiday. So we're adding the ability now for someone to come into the system and pass in a new public holiday. So this just takes in one of those entities, adds it to my DB context, and saves it, then returns that holiday back as, as JSON. Now, over on the UI side, uh, again, we, we have just a very simple Vue.js application here. Uh, that displays a list of those dates. We'll run it and take a look at that in a minute. Uh, and we have this holiday class to represent that, that concept of the public holiday that we have on the back end. So in a previous episode, we talked about how we load that from the data that came across the wire. So the, that date time was formatted in, in just a ISO format of year dash month dash day. And uh, in order to get that into a format that actually works for us within the application here, uh, we take that and convert it uh, fr from ESO to a date time object within a framework called Lexon. So I will also uh, link to that in the show notes, but Lexon is a really good little library for dealing with date times in JavaScript uh, because the, the built-in date object has a lot of uh, it, it gets pretty complex when you're trying to work with it, and it's, it's often not quite exactly what you need. So similar to how on the, Java, the .NET side we need Nota time, uh, on the front end we often need another library as well. So I'm often either using Lexon or uh, the other one would be Moment.js. I've lately been kind of leaning towards Lexon more often than Moment. Okay, so that's a, a quick recap. Now what we've added to the, the application here is I've added a method here that says add hol that's called add holiday. And what it's gonna do when the user clicks a button and calls, it will call this method. And it's going to uh, post to the public holidays endpoint, that one we just looked at. And then it's just going to stringify the object called new holiday. And then if the response is okay, then just push it to the list of holidays and reset my new holiday to just a new instance of holiday. So on my data for the view object, I have new holiday. And uh, over on the UI side where I'm using Beautify just to, to show how that part of it works. And this is where things always get a little bit weird in JavaScript, I find. Um, 
you you kind of have to pick uh, some kind of UI component that lets the user pick a date. And I'm using Vutify in this app. So Vutify has a really nice date picker component here, uh, which it works really well. Uh, but it every date picker kind of has its own way of dealing with dates. So this particular date picker with Vutify accepts dates in ISO 8601. Uh, format. So just naively what I'm doing to start out here is I'm binding this whole thing and it's yes it's a little bit verbose here. Uh, the important part is probably just really the the date picker here. The rest is all just getting the pop-up to work just right. Uh, this is the part where I'm binding the to the date property on my new new holiday object. So that's this guy here that's actually going to be a Luxon date. So if I go and run this, I don't actually expect this to work. Uh, we're going to run into a few little hiccups along the way here, and then we'll we'll work through those with a, a few different tricks that I've learned as I, I go through this type of problem. Okay, so I'm running the app. I go to my little view sample portion here. And first thing I notice is that, well, that doesn't quite look right. That's like the whole date dumped out. It was supposed to default to today. And then when I click on it, the pop-up doesn't open up. So if I take a look at my uh, console log, it looks like, oh, this is having a hard time with the date that I value must be a string, and it found something that wasn't a string. So it's confused. It's just not working the way we expect it to. So this is where the fact that we actually had this as a class already is quite handy because now we can start adding behavior to it. So what I'm going to do is add something called display date to this and that's going to be a property, a getter and setter property that allows the date time picker to uh, deal with this holiday class in the format that it's expecting, that ESO format, and not the Luxon date that internally I'm using. So I'm going to do get display date. And for that, I'm just going to say return this dot date question mark this dot date dot to ESO date, which is a method on on the Luxon date. So if the date has a value, I'm returning to ESO date or ISO date. Otherwise, just an empty string. Okay, so that's the getter, and then the setter, which is when that date time picker is going to want to set the value back. I'm going to need to, it's going to be passing in the date in ISO format, so I'm going to need to parse it out and and create a Luxon date from that. So similar to my getter, I'm just going to say set display date. And I'll just say holiday date is the thing that it's passing in. And that's just going to be this.date equals Luxon.dateTime.from ISO ISO holiday date. Okay, so that gives me the things I need to bind my UI. I'm going to go back up to my Vutify code here, and I'm just going to change all of these things over to bind to the display date. So now I'm hoping that when I run this, or when I refresh my page, rather, uh, at least it's the date picker will work now. So we're refreshing, I'm going to clear my console output. That looks clean so far, so that's reassuring. I'll try to zoom that in for you. Okay, so this looks good now. So let's say that I add, we're running low on holidays here for the rest of the year, so we're going to add another, another one on the 16th. We'll call it Simon Day. I already added an International Dave Day. And I'm going to hit this button that should add it and I get a 400 error. So I have a breakpoint here on the post action method and I actually didn't even reach that. So something didn't, something broke even before we got to that point. And that was the model binding. So when it was trying to bind whatever JSON data that I posted over to this public holiday object, uh, it failed. So let's take a look at why that is. And we'll scoot over to the browser tools here and take a look at that. So this is the call that failed. And if we look at what was passed in, 
all the way down, we can see that the date time that was passed in was actually a full date time with an offset, uh, which isn't what we were expecting. This is a local date, so what we actually want to pass in is just that. Um, and if we look at the response, we can confirm that in fact it was a 400 error here, and the error was that it couldn't convert this value to a note a time dot local date. So dot date, that didn't work. Okay, so the trick that I've been using to solve this problem, uh, basically what we want, um, we want when we when we send this data over the wire, and I'm just doing remember a JSON dot stringify on the new holiday that we've. Uh, bound to in our UI. Uh, I want that to be formatted in a way that the server side is expecting. Uh, so within JavaScript what you can do within a class is you can actually just basically override this method called toJSON which the json.stringify method will call on the on the object and here we can actually just return exactly whatever it is that we want to return. So in this case I want to return this dot we're going to say name, this dot name, and date is going to be this dot date dot to so date. Um, so we can do any kind of logic we need here to get it formatted just the way we need it to. In this case, I believe this is all we need. Um, we could add the ID in here as well, but we actually aren't dealing with the ID here with adding a new one, so this should be sufficient to make this portion of it work. So now if I refresh this and I try adding Simon's Day again on arbitrarily October 16th and Simon's Day, this should all work. So you, as you can see, we hit our breakpoint. If I inspect my holiday here, I can see that it is in fact Friday, October 16th, 2020, and it is Simon's Day. And I can save that to the database. And there it is, I got my date back. So bonus points, one last thing that we could do here. Uh, that This is actually just a text box that displays it at this point um, as a, a text field that's read only uh, versus the date picker that is like this calendar thing that opens up. So it would be nice if this was formatted the same way as we were formatting things down here. So I believe that I can do that. Uh, if we look at our class, we have this formatted date, which is actually the thing that we're displaying in our list. So I think that uh, up here on this read-only text field, instead of binding that to the display date, I could actually say formatted date. And that should, if I spelt everything correctly, get that to, that formatting to line up. There you go. So now my formatting lines up, everything looks good. My dates are flowing properly from .NET over to JavaScript and then from JavaScript and back over again and dealing with uh, whatever unique formatting is necessary for this particular date time picker. So that, that wraps up this little mini series and I'll put together a playlist if you want to share with folks to learn more about NotaTime, uh, dealing with Entity Framework Core with NotaTime, and also integrating with your front-end JavaScript applications. And that's all I had for today. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to like, comment, and share. We'll see you next time on the next episode. Bye!